welcome back. Uh, today we are working on the Integra again and um, I am just kind of running the car making sure everything's good. I'm going to bleed the cooling system out because the thermostat hasn't popped yet. Uh, sometimes you get lucky on Hondas and you can just fill it up, shut the cap on, uh, run it for a little while until the thermostat opens, let it cool back down, open the cap back up and refill it. But uh, in this case this thermostat's a little bit stubborn. So I'm going to have to pop the cap off, run it with the cap off, and have my like coolant bleeding funnel on here, and we'll bleed the cooling system out. Um, and it's also developed a little bit of an oil leak from the head gasket here, just the corner of the cylinder head. It's not coming from the cam seal or the VTEC solenoid or anything like that that I verified. Um, it does have that little bit of oil leak there, nothing too crazy, nothing to worry about I don't think. Um, what else do we do on it? I got the uh, exhaust fully installed, so I'll show you guys that quick. So it's three inch all the way back and out to the muffler. I also discovered that the speedometer wasn't working, so I had to de-pin this uh, I had to depin the uh, connector for the speedometer because the pin was pushed out on it as well. So I repinned the speedometer uh, wiring. So now the speedo works. And I mean, it's just been wiring after wiring after wiring with this thing, guys. Um, I got the gauges installed last night, like I said. Those are looking pretty good. Everything works. Got the boost gauge hooked up, water temp hooked up. Oil pressure is not hooked up because he did not supply me with a um, sensor for the block or anything like that, so that's not working. But the wideband and everything else is working, so that's kind of where we're at. <clears throat> I just put some transmission fluid in it. I uh, put like 1.75 quarts of Pennzoil Synchro Mesh. That's what I like to run on these Hondas, and they seem to shift very good with that fluid in there. So that's what I run. Um, what else do we do? Now I have to put a battery box in the back because as you uh, may know, this battery is just kind of chilling right here. It's just kind of chilling in the back, not really hooked up to nothing. So I got a battery box from the parts store and we're gonna throw the battery box in it. And then I got a set of spark plugs for it too because I'm assuming that this does not have the BKR7s like I like to run on like a three to 350 horsepower car. Uh, usually with more than like 400 horsepower, I like to run the eights, part number 4554 5, NGKV power. Um, and then over like 600, you can run the nines uh, for whatever. But uh, the sevens seem to work the best for like a 300 horsepower street car. So that's what we're gonna throw in this thing. Uh, gap them at like 20 thousandths. So I'm gonna do that. And then we will pick back up once the spark plugs are in and I'm gonna bleed the cooling system after that. Hey man. What is a dumbass? Okay guys, so I got the Integra up and running. Uh, I took it for its first test drive and everything seems to be working pretty good. Um, I still gotta tune it yet, but um, all seems well so far. We'll drive it here in a little while, but Michael ended up calling me and you know, just being typical Michael. And he said, hey, he calls me and he said, hey man, my car's running real lean, real lean at idle and then cruising around it's really lean it's like 18 0 off the gauge and i just kind of thought to my head are you blaming me for the tune it's no the tune's fault. no no it's the no, tune never dude it's the fucking tune never Fuck came it. out of my Fuck that hunter tune. it's a tune hunter tune it's a hunter tune car that's why it's running like that never came out of my mouth but anyways i said michael what changed and he said oh i don't know i think i put different gas in it or something and i'm like well maybe and he's like, but my car's dead now. The battery's dead. <laughs> and I'm like, hmm, what would cause that? Battery dead, car runs like shit. Hmm. The tune. He said, yeah, the tune. I it never said that, you fucks. Go <laughs> <laughs> <You> fuck yourselves. <laughs> so anyways, what do you got in your hand? Uh, a chunk of metal. Is this an alternator? Yeah. What does that do? It alternates. Makes my car start again. <laughs> It charges your battery. Yeah, yeah. It maintains a voltage yeah, for your, your car. Your light doesn't flicker, and then your injectors fire like normal, and then your wideband reads fine. <laughs> so, anyways, Michael's car is on the side of the road right now, and we're about to go uh, venture off into the night and.
throw an alternator on his car on the side of the road. No, we're not. Because we're not going to fucking tow no, it. No, we're not. What are we doing? That's the wrong fucking plug. No, it's not. I have a big green plug. It's a square plug. Really? I, it's right. I know it is. Positive. Yes. Why do I have a big circle green plug then? You don't. It's yes, a square. It's a square. Did you not look at it? Want to bet me a hundred bucks? I looked at it. I put it in. Want to bet me a hundred bucks? What Timmy we got? Eleven oh nine. Yeah, it's only eleven o'clock. Well, we've been in the parking lot here for about an hour, a little longer maybe. We uh, got the car jacked up and got the alternator out. And uh, if you guys never done an alternator on a Honda Civic with the motor installed, it's kind of a pain in the ass. Don't do it. Yeah, don't do it. But uh, it's not so bad. You just got to know what way to finagle the alternator up through the bottom, like in between the subframe and the engine. And the axle. And in between the axle and all that. And we ended up getting the new alternator in. And we're about to fire it up and see if the alternator is any good. It's a used one, but we just had one laying around. Hopefully it'll work. And uh, hopefully Michael's car will be all good to go. But this is what we're doing, <laughs> uh, trying to get this thing figured out. There's the old one. Good to go. You got the jack stand out of there? Yeah. yeah. It's on the ground. There goes your soda. God damn. Mm. Mm. Yesterday we spilled coolant. Today we spilled iced tea. Michael's frustrated. Yep. He's been uh, under the car swearing at it for like an hour. I have actually haven't said one word. What do you mean? I, I don't think I said one word under the car. You said a lot of F words. <laughs> What is going on guys? So I am working on the car still. It is 3.10 in the morning and uh, I've been driving it around for quite a while. I'm sorry we didn't film a whole lot. I was actually teaching Michael and Christian a little bit about tuning. So hopefully they enjoyed that and they got to see kind of tuning and stuff first person and whatnot. But I uh, kind of wanted to go over some chrome bugs again with you guys and tell you what I'm doing with chrome now. Um, I actually had some issues with um, a few of the Chrome Gold files on the newer version. And I know a guy that tunes down in Madison. If you guys know of him, he's called Kurt Miller. And he's actually helped me out quite a bit with a lot of the Chrome stuff. And I, a while ago, he told me that he uses Chrome 1.5, which is like one of the oldest versions of Chrome. And... Um, I re-downloaded Chrome 1.5 and I got it unlocked with a dealer license so I can have Chrome Gold and everything. Um, and I got the car tuned up pretty good on Chrome Gold, but I went to um, plug my chip burner in to burn the chip using the Motes Burn 2 here. And it doesn't recognize the chip burner because it's an older uh, version of Chrome. So it doesn't notice the burn too. It only notices like the old school chip burners. So I'm like, fuck, I can't burn the chip when I'm done tuning. I can only tune with the ostrich and then save it to the ostrich. I can't actually save it to a chip and then put the chip into the ECU. So what I did is I actually downloaded Moats Flash and Burn. This is uh, this software right here. It's a very simple uh, interface here. You pretty much load whatever file you choose your chip chip right here so like these are all the different chips that it supports and then you can actually load the file so like i would load the file here whatever uh you know tune i got and then once the file is loaded you literally just hit program chip and then it programs the chip uh to whatever you set it for so that's kind of um an older way to burn chips on chrome or using chrome um, I actually used to use flash and burn when I did turbo edit stuff back in the day. Um, that was like OBD zero shit. But uh, it, it, Chrome, I feel like they tried to fix a lot of bugs and they tried to, you know, have the newer softwares work better. But I feel like, you know, sticking with the old version of Chrome is actually maybe better because I haven't noticed the bugs like I do with the newer stuff, like no rev limiter and all that kind of stuff. So... I'm using Chrome Gold files 
only now. And I'm using the moats flash and burn to burn the chips, if that makes sense. But anyways, I'm going to get driving this thing around a little bit more. Maybe we'll film a pull or two and uh, we'll pick up after that. Got the tune up pretty good. Just cruising in this thing. Um, this turbo actually works pretty good. It's got a lot of shaft play, but it seems to be working really good. It's not smoking a bunch. It's not, uh, you know, making any weird noise. And I mean, you come into boost with it. She spools right up. I mean, we're at like 2,500, three grand. Listen to the blow off elm. Hang on, I'll give her a little more you can hear the blow off valve. The blow off valve is so freaking loud in this thing. <laughs> Sounds like an SRT4. <laughs> yeah, tune's pretty good. It's a little bit rich up top because I uh, actually noticed that the car was boost creeping a little bit. So I set the rev limiter a little bit lower than I normally would. It's at like 7,500 or 7,800. And uh, I'm gonna leave it there until uh, we go with a better fuel. Uh, these injectors are pretty maxed out already. They're actually maxed out, I shouldn't say they are. They're pretty much, they are maxed out. Uh, this setup's on like eight pounds of boost and uh, it rips pretty damn good. This turbo combo on this motor is like, it, it's really good for a street car. <laughs> it actually works really good. I'll get into it third here quick for you guys. like 7,500 or so it starts to rocket ship up and starts to boost creep. Um, I'll try to go over some of that quick when we get back to the house. I'll show you guys kind of why it's doing that and or at least why I think it's doing it. But uh, so like I said, I'm setting the rev limiter a little low for them so we don't run into issues there. And uh, yeah, so I'll do maybe one more pull and then uh, we'll call her a day with this thing. Uh, I've been driving it honestly for like two hours, two and a half hours, just kind of, you know, nitpicking on the tune up. And it seems like it's good. Uh, everything seems to run really good. The only thing is, uh, this Skunk 2 intake manifold doesn't have a idle air control valve. So I had to set the throttle manually, and it only really likes to idle at like a thousand or a little higher. So that's where we're going to leave it. I think second gear it blows the tires right off. Oh yeah. Uh, this thing is a lot of fun guys. I uh, am actually very surprised <laughs> how this turned out. Uh, I did not expect this thing to even make it down the road and I've put nearly a hundred miles on it already and not a hiccup yet. Other than uh, when we initially put it all together, um, it, the wastegate had two springs in it, so it rocket shipped to like 15 pounds, and I'm like, ah, I'm not running that much, you know. So I turned the boost down, we took the wastegate off, and we put just one of the springs in the wastegate, and now it's on like eight pounds, six or eight. So that's a good level to be at for now on pump gas until he figures out what else he wants to do. Uh, he's gonna switch over to my injectors later. I'm just out of stock right now. So he's gonna do that and then we're gonna put it on E85 and turn it up a little bit, but he'll be plenty happy for now, I guarantee it. This thing uh, makes really good power. All right, so since the tune is pretty much good to go, um, I wanted to show you guys quick on Chrome here. Uh, hopefully you can see. Here, I'll adjust the camera. 
we're gonna play with the launch control a little bit. So as you can see, this is the chrome gold uh, rev limit section, and you can do low cam rev limiter, high cam rev limiter, and standstill rev limiter. So the standstill rev limiter right now is at 5,000 RPM, and our standstill boost generator down here, which is the anti-lag uh, feature on chrome gold, is at zero degrees ignition retard and zero degrees fuel enrichment. And I'll show you what the launch control sounds like with the settings right here. So that's how it sounds now. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to add 30 degrees of ignition retard into it and we'll see how it sounds then. Oh yeah, <laughs> she's getting good now boys. Okay, she's getting better. So let's add some fuel into the mixture. So we'll put 40% fuel into it too. We'll send that to the computer and see how she sounds now. Fucking mint. All right, guys, I know it's freaking dark out and I'm sorry. You probably can't see shit, but um, I just finalized the two-step setting where I want to leave it for the anti-lag. And uh, the higher the rev limiter is for the two-step, usually the more bangs and pops you're gonna get. So I raised it to 6,500 RPM and I was just tweaking with it and playing with it a little bit. And we ended up with 30 degrees ignition retard and 10 degrees fuel enrichment. So 6,500 and 10 degrees or 10% fuel, 30 degrees ignition, and this is how it sounds with a full exhaust. Even um, I got this freaking two-step pretty dialed in, guys. Just take a listen. We made it back and uh, I'm gonna give this thing a quick once over now that we drove it and we put a lot of miles on it. We hit a lot of bumps in the road and no wiring issues to speak of. Uh, nothing is not working, you know, everything's working on the car, everything seems good. I mean, the headlights, every light in the car works. Um, it seems like it's good to go. I, I, like I said, I went over a lot of the wiring on it, so you know. I did verify most of it to just make sure that it's all good. So yeah, here we are. Um, this thing's a beast, guys. Uh, honestly, this car turned out way better than I thought it was going to. Yeah, the only issue is, is uh, this head gasket leak a little bit out of the corner. I think that's where it's leaking. Uh, I don't visually see any oil from up here 
you know, from like a cam seal or anything like that. I think it's just the head gasket starting to leak a little bit. So, you know, that's just something he's going to have to deal with unless he wants to put a head gasket in it. But uh, anyways, um, I wanted to go over the setup quick with you guys. This is a stock GSR engine with a built cylinder head. It has, um, you know, just springs, retainers, and it has camshafts in it. I don't know what camshafts are in it. I think they're like block stage two cams or something like that. And uh, you can definitely tell the thing picks up really hard up top and hence the boost creep. I think it just has so much more exhaust energy with the camshafts kind of dialing in at the higher RPM that it starts to boost creep on this small wastegate. This is just a 38 millimeter V-band wastegate. So maybe upgrading to a 44 mil later will help control the boost creep. Um, it's not bad, but it is bad enough to where I set the rev limiter a little low. I set it at like 7,500 just to keep it safe um, for now until we go E85 on this setup. I don't usually like running these engines that much farther than like 8 to 10 pounds of boost on pump gas. Um, usually anything over 10 pounds or so, I always throw E85 in. But this guy wanted to go with the pump gas just for now because he only has RC 440cc injectors which it is tuned on and um, he will be switching over to the flex fuel decapped injectors um, at a later date but since he's from out of town I wanted him to bring me the car with E85 from his town uh, with because you know I've noticed when I've I tune cars here with E85 uh, the customer will take it back to their town say an hour or two hours away and they end up getting a different tune reading because the ethanol content is different from my town to where they're from or wherever. So I would said, you know, it would be best if you kind of filled the car up with E85 before you came and I'll send you a base map or something so you can drive it here and then we can tune it on the E85 that is from where you're at versus the stuff where I am. Um, Han data is nice in the sense because you can just get a ethanol content sensor and you can tune the car for whatever percentage it is and then the Han data will adjust um, accordingly to whatever ethanol content you have. Um, you know, if you have to put a little bit less content in, it will pull fuel out and if it has more ethanol content, it'll add fuel in kind of thing. So that's awesome with Han data. I actually just... Um, placed an order for one for myself so you guys can look forward to that in the coming videos hopefully you enjoyed this headache of a mess of a car but damn it turned out great guys i am super happy with how this car came out uh, everything seems to be working very good um, no issues to speak of other than some small things like the uh, head gasket leak there and the heater kind of sucks i think the heater core is a little plugged up or the thermostat's a little sticky because the lower hose doesn't get that warm um, I don't know. The car doesn't overheat or anything. It just kind of, you know, is lazy cycling coolant through the thermostat. And I'm thinking it's just got a sticky thermostat. Maybe it just needs to be replaced. So he's going to have to do that and whatever. But, I mean, this thing is fucking awesome, guys. I don't even want to give it back to the guy, honestly. It's fucking fun. I was driving it around, like I said, for an hour or two. And it seems great. Seems freaking great, guys. So, uh, yep. That's going to be it for this video, guys. Uh, hopefully it was cool or whatever. I don't know. I feel like my videos, I haven't been, like, motivated to film much. So I apologize that I haven't been making, like, super good videos. At least in my opinion, I haven't been making super good videos. Maybe they're still good to you guys, but to me it's just kind of... I've just kind of been in work mode, if you know what I mean. I'm not in filming mode. But hopefully in the next couple days, this thing is going to be out of here. He said he's going to pick it up tomorrow. So um, hopefully we can get back to like a normal video schedule and we can do some cool stuff and uh, keep the channel interesting for you guys. But uh, anyways, that's going to wrap it up for Turbo Integra GSR. And uh, oh yeah, I wanted to mention one more thing to you guys. Sorry that I'm rambling here. But ram horn manifolds tend to boost creep. I don't know why. I think it's just the way they're designed, but it's very common for a ram horn style manifold to boost creep. 
Um, I think it's because the front where the uh, wastegate goes on to really kind of focuses on just the two front exhaust runners here. It doesn't focus on all four. Um, I feel like a top mount manifold has a better wastegate placement than a ram horn, but I could be totally wrong. But I don't know. The ram horn seems to be a common manifold to boost creep, so it's something for you guys to keep in mind. Um, especially on a high RPM setup like this one. Uh, like I said, anything over 7,500 and the boost starts creeping. So sometimes with boost creep, it can get as violent as 10 extra pounds of boost. And sometimes it can be very minimal, just a pound or two. But, you know, not, nonetheless, any boost creep is kind of bad unless you have a built motor, which this is not a built motor. So I'm keeping it extra safe for the guy so it lasts a long time for him. And, you know, he can enjoy it. But anyways, thank you for watching, guys. Um, please smash the like button for all the hard work I've put into this thing. And um, like, comment, and subscribe. And we will uh, see you in the next video. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe the next day. I'm not sure. But uh, subscribe and hit the bell so you guys are notified when it happens. And uh, we'll see you later.